to start talking about the budgeting aspect or unit nine uh it gives you a couple questions and you don't have to write any of this down just think about it in your head okay um it says, what items do you spend money on currently? Think about some of the things that you spend your money on. Now, I know that's kind of hard to think about because how many of you all actually have a job? Any of you all have a job? One of you? Okay. So, when you have money, think about what you're spending it on. Clothes, whatever. Okay? Now, imagine yourself as a college graduate and you've got your first full-time job. So, you're actually starting your career. Okay? How do you think your spending as a college grad will compare with your current spending as a teen? Do you think you'll spend more money after you graduate from college than what you're spending right now? Absolutely. You're going to have more responsibilities. Excuse me. The older you get, the more uh, responsibility that you will take on. So, yes, your spending will change quite drastically after you graduate from college. Okay? You got pencil on bar. Um, so the next part here says, how can I keep track of my income and expenses? So this is where you guys kind of got to talk to me a little bit. How do you think you can keep up with your income and your expenses? How do you think you can do that? Can you do it through a checking account? Do you write down what you have to spend your checks on? How much you write those checks for? Things of that nature. Yeah. Does the bank keep up with uh, transactions through your credit through your uh, checking account? Yeah. But you got to know how much money you're making and how much you're spending. And obviously, you're going to want to be able to uh, keep more money than you're spending. You guys understand that? And then it says, what sacrifices are you willing to make to reach your financial goals? Because all of you, at some point or another, have some type of financial goal you're trying to get to, right? So that's kind of some of the things that we're going to be discussing while we're in here. So hopefully we can make this make sense and go from there with it, all right? So with that being said, let me get to the notes right here. Or I'm going to give you a handout, or I'm gonna, we're going to go through a handout together and see if you can figure this out as well, okay? So it says, how do I budget? Again, guys, a lot of these notes that we're getting, and I'll send this to you in the uh, classroom. I just want to go through it because I, all it is is you just understanding how to use money, okay? It says, all of Sharon's friends know who to, who's to turn to if they have money questions. It says, Sharon attributes her financial savvy to the summer job she has held for over the past four years. These jobs helped her save a th few thousand dollars for college to minimize her student loans. Her friend Elena approaches her the summer before their senior year of high school, confessing she has a whopping 56 bucks saved for college, even after working part-time jobs for the past three years. Elena asks Sharon what she could do to manage her money more effectively. So Sharon's answer is one word, budget. So here's where this kind of comes in. All right. So Sharon asks Elena to describe her goals and current spending habits. So Elena responds with the following. She says, college costs a lot more than I thought. And my parents expect me to pay for my pay for my living expenses on campus. Those are going to be around three thousand dollars a year. I am used to working a part time job and going to school, but I'm not sure I can handle both anymore. Budgeting seems like an idea, but where do you start? So basically, what we're getting at here is where do we start with the budgeting aspect of this? All right. So it says Elena only has fifty six bucks saved for college. We're going to brainstorm possible reasons why she has only managed to save this amount. So in your brain right now, let's try to figure out or think about how she's only managed to be able to do this. And think about your situation. How many of you have ever tried to save money before? None of y'all has ever tried to save money yeah. for nothing? You have? Yeah. How's that go? That's yeah, hard. Why is it hard? Because you find other stuff you want. You're always going to find something else you want, right? Uh, and I do that constantly. I'll be wanting to save money up for something, and then all of a sudden, uh, well, this looks pretty cool. I think I want to buy this, or this looks pretty cool. I think I'll buy that. And then all of a sudden, I don't have that money anymore, and I'm trying to figure out what exactly happened. You know what I mean? So I understand the idea 
that it's easy to lose money. All right, so brainstorming ideas to manage to save amounts. Okay, so first off, where it says possible reasons why she has only managed to save this amount of money. She more than likely has no idea where she's spending her money. You guys understand what I'm getting at? She may go into numerous stores and be like, well, hey, I like that. Hey, I like this. Hey, I like that. And she's just buying useless stuff. You understand what I mean? So the first answer there you may want to put down only buy necessities or only buy things that are needed. Not just wanted. Okay? Everybody has things we need. And we can do without things that we want sometimes. Okay? The next thing we need to do when it comes to budgeting, guys... Put down that you need to prioritize. So put saving money first. That's what I would write down. Put saving money first. Make it a priority. Okay? You can go buy anything you want at any point in time. But don't just go buying stuff because you can. You understand what I'm saying? Prioritize it. Make it a habit. I need to save this amount of money, so I'm going to save this amount of money. Okay? And then, uh, basically, the third one is get rid of all the unnecessary um, expenses, such as, like, subscriptions. You may not want to go out all the time. Okay? If you don't go out all the time, uh, you're not spending as much money on gas. Okay? So put down, get rid of unnecessary expenses. Now, if she does that for three or four days, is things going to go good? Yeah, but if she only does it for three or four days, is it going to help her save for college? No, so budgeting is a long process this is something that you got to take into consideration all the time okay so that's the first part there and then the last one i'd like to add to number one put down that you have to develop a habit of saving money so develop a habit of saving money now how can i do that how can i develop a habit of saving money it says she has a part-time job, right? So let's say her part-time job, she makes, I don't know, $300 a week, okay? Could she set it up through her bank that she could have $50 taken out of that check and put directly into a savings account and not mess with it? You guys remember those CDs we talked about? What's the difference between a CD and a savings account? Y'all remember the certificate of deposits? Y'all remember what the difference is there? In a savings account, can I get the money whenever I want to? Oh, yeah. In a CD, you, yeah, CD, you kind of got to wait a certain time period, right? So it may be even a best option to put it into a CD where she can't touch it. You know what I mean? And if she does touch it, she doesn't gain interest. Does that make you guys? She gets penalized for taking it. So develop a habit of saving. And I will put down take money from paycheck. and deposit directly into a savings account. All right, and deposit directly into a savings account. Simple enough. You guys understand that? Okay. All right. So let's move on to number two here. Okay. It says, what do you think Elena's goal should be? Pretty common sense. She's trying to save how much money for room and board? 
How much is room and board costing her? Y'all remember? $3,000. So her goal should be to save $3,000 next year to allow her to focus on her studies while at college. Because if you're homeless, it's kind of hard to do your homework, right? Okay? So look at it like that. It says, what are a few ways that Alina can better understand her spending patterns? And this is the one I want to spend a little bit on, okay? So what could we do to understand spending patterns? And jot that down. I'm going to write down spending patterns. Spending patterns. There we go. And I'm going to put a question mark. Now, obviously, we're talking about this young lady's here. But as we're going through this, think about how you spend money and how you would have to change things in order to save it, okay? So, what are a few ways that she can get better at understanding her spending patterns? One thing we can do is this, guys. We can go back and review our bank and credit card statements. Okay, so go. I would put down review bank and credit card statements. Now, if I go back and review those things, what is that going to tell me? Does anybody know? If I go back, think about it. If you had a checking account, if you had a credit card, and you go back and look at the statements that they're sending you, what is that going to tell you? It's going to tell you where you're spending what? Money. All your money. If I'm spending $500 a month on video games, is that a problem? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to have to move. I'm going to have to fix that, okay? So, you need to go back and review your bank and credit card statements. The next thing I can do to help me save and what I'm spending money on is I can track my spending. So, put down track spending. For a month. Now, how am I going to track what I'm spending a month? Obviously, I can go back and look at my checking account. I can go back and look at my credit card statement. But let's say that I spend I spend a lot of money just using cash. So, how am I going to track how much cash I'm spending by getting what when I purchase something? What's that? Receipts. So, track spending for a month, and I will put in parentheses there by collecting receipts. Okay, so you know exactly how much money you're uh, spending. Okay? And then what could I do? What's the technological, the 2020 version? How would you guys track things? Now, with me, when I was growing up, we got a checking account. You wrote a check. You wrote down in your transaction book who you wrote that check, check to. Now. And then you wrote down how much you wrote it for, Right? Nowadays, people don't normally do that because everything's online, right? More importantly, what does most banks have that you can get on a the phone? They have a what? An app, right? You just click on that app. tells you everything you need to know about whatever account you have, right? So, I would find, put down for the third one, find a budgeting app to help you with your spending. All right? <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's basically where we are. So this lady is trying to help her friend budget money. So she explains all this to her. Put, make saving a priority. Track all your purchases. Get rid of all unnecessary subscriptions. Things of that nature. Things that's just common sense that you should know, right? So now we get to this part of this little exercise. So Sharon develops a basic plan for Alina to track every dollar she spends over the course of a month. Elena collects all her receipts in a shoebox and reviews them with Sharon at the end of the month. So, at the end of the month, this is what she's basically spent. She's 10 latte, that's 40 bucks on coffee, 30 bucks on movies. You know, the list goes on and on and on, okay? I really wish it only took two fill-ups at 35 bucks each for gas, but we'll just use these examples as what they are, okay? So, so to help make sense of all this information, Saren asked Alina to organize the information by using the budget template provided below. In the category column, she lists all the other stuff. So you guys see how this works, right? Y'all see how that goes. So here's where this is going to come in for you all. You all have all the basic information right here. Y'all got me? I'm going to send this piece of paper to you in your classroom. I'm going to send it to A-Day and I'm going to send it to Virtual. 
You all have the notes they're getting the video for. I would like for you guys to finish four, five, six, and seven over the weekend. And we're going to review it on Monday. It'll take you 15 minutes, okay? Just do them or what? What do you mean? Just, yeah, just answer the questions. Oh, like, okay. you're going to have to fill this out, but I'm going to send it to you in the classroom. Oh, okay. I will probably just put it in the stream with the video. Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. So all y'all got to do is answer these questions, and we're going to talk about it on Monday. Has everybody got me there? Yeah. Because we simply don't have time to do it today. We've got eight minutes left in class. So does anybody have any questions about how to sort of start budgeting and things of that nature? All right, good. So that's where we'll stop today.